Well, good morning, YouTube. This is Chuck, and it's uh, Thursday, July 20th. Another beautiful morning over at the park, and got a dog trainer over there working with a lady. You see them over here quite a bit. They uh, just got done walking old Flapjack. He's he's right there in the truck. So, but I thought it uh, while it's nice and cool over here, I thought I'd take a couple of minutes and uh, tell you another story. I've got one. Uh, I hinted at it at my last one, and this is uh, this is from the Wayback Machine, and I'm talking way, way back. So in order to kind of set the stage for it, I've um, got to uh, tell you a little bit about my high school days. Uh, now, I grew up in uh, Mesa, Arizona, which is a suburb of Phoenix, and it's, um, it's actually the third largest city in Arizona, but it doesn't get anywhere near the attention that Phoenix and Tucson do. But, uh, but anyway, I grew up in Mesa and went to Mesa High, and uh, I was a, you know, I was an honor roll student in my freshman and sophomore year. And then uh, in my junior and senior year, I actually worked in a, a, went to a vocational ed program. And I, so I'd go to school in the morning till one o'clock and then I'd work in the afternoon. It was an auto mechanics vocational ed program. So my, uh, my junior year, I actually worked at a gas station. I was a pump jockey and you know, put people put gas in people's tanks and wash the window and check their oil and check their tires and did all that kind of stuff like they did in the old days and yeah I did I did that that was my first actual paying job but the second year when my senior year uh, I actually worked at a car dealership I worked at a Chevrolet dealership and for any of you that uh, from the Phoenix area it's been a long time down there it was uh, Brown and Hoy Chevrolet on East Main Street right downtown and uh, it's gone now. They've sold, and moved, and a bunch of stuff now. But that's that's uh, that's where I used to work, and and uh, so they started me out uh, in uh, new car get ready, which is where most young guys start out at. But before too long, uh, they thought I had potential, and they moved me over to used car. Now my uh, my senior year in high school, uh, I actually I actually won a toolbox full of Snap-on tools for being a top automotive and mechanic student. And, uh, and my picture was in a yearbook, but due to a technicality, I came up one credit short, and I actually didn't graduate. Uh, I, after I got in the military, I took a GED and got that taken care of. But uh, anyway, that's neither here nor there on the story. But anyway, working uh, the people that work in, uh, in used car in dealerships are usually one of two things. They're either the young guys just coming on to their career or the old guys in the twilight of their career. And there was three of us at the dealership. And... Two of them were older guys who were getting ready to retire, and the, uh, you know, the, the uh, flat rate, working flat rate on the line as a mechanic, you know, they didn't want to do that anymore, so they, they worked in a used car, and, and uh, Mac and Ike were their names, and a couple of good old guys, and anyway, they, uh, they kind of took me under their wing and helped me with what I didn't know, and of course, I always thought I knew more than I did, but that's just the way young guys are, but anyway, uh, what my story's about is uh, they, uh, the dealership took in a took in a trade, and uh, this would have been uh, probably late 1966, I'm guessing, maybe early 67, but I think it was probably late 66. And uh, they took they took in a 57 Chevrolet, uh, Bel Air two door post, so it wasn't the hard top; it was the post model. Uh, very very straight, never been wrecked, clean. But it had been hot rotted, and the guy that had it had done some something to it, and he couldn't get it to run. And apparently, he finally got disgusted with it, and so he, he uh, if I remember correctly, he traded it in on, on a new Chevelle, uh, SS396 or something like that. But anyway, uh, the, uh, so they took it in and trade. They didn't give him much for it. And so part of our job in, in used car was we, we did a multi-point inspection and everything came in and we made a decision as to whether what it needed and whether it was worthwhile putting money into it to fix it or whether we should just go to auction. So this thing was on way on the lower end of the spectrum. And so the guys at the dealership, uh, you know, knowing, knowing me, and they said, they asked me if I wanted to buy it. They said they'd sell it to me for what they gave the guy for trade-in. So basically they sell it to me for what they gave for it. And uh, so, yeah, I, it was a pretty clean old Chevy, and a lot of the guys I ran with drove 55, six or seven Chevys. And so, uh, so I said, yeah, I, I want that, that's cool. 
so anyway so i ended up buying it i don't even remember how much i gave for it now but it wasn't very much remember this is back in 1966 i want to say 350 dollars, or maybe it was more than that i don't remember now for sure somewhere along that line so but anyway i, I can't imagine what that car is worth now but anyway the uh so i started driving that around and and uh it ran it idled good it ran pretty good at low rpm uh but it totally fell on its nose when you started trying to get you know, when you start trying to accelerate with it it just had no power well the the old guy had, or the i'm gonna say the old guy but the guy that traded it in uh i don't think he was doing the work himself i think he was having work done on it but it turned out that he had bought a uh, new short block 327 short block and that was in the days when everybody was running 283s so 327 was considered a big motor and i uh, bought the short block and then put a set of uh, what they call the double hump uh, heads on it which were the performance heads of the time and uh, any of you that are in my age group you remember the old uh, small block chevys with the double hump heads and the, but anyway the uh, so he put a set of those on it he had somebody build him a set of headers and uh, but he could never get the darn thing to run right and finally he got frustrated with it and got rid of it so the uh in those days, uh, headers, uh, you know, the, the small block Chevy manifolds, they had used what they call the ram's horn manifolds, and they were pretty restrictive. And so a lot of us, to gain performance, we wanted headers. And a lot of headers, uh, there weren't a lot of header companies, and they weren't readily available, and they were relatively pricey, and we were all poor. And so it became a thing to build your own headers. And you buy a flange kit, and you buy some straight tubing, and you buy some U-bends, and and uh, that was before they had MIG welders and TIG welders, and so you, you weld them up with gas welders, oxyacetylene gas torches, and you just take your time, you build a set of headers. And so somebody had done that with this, and they came back to uh, four-inch collectors, and then with a, a thing going back through the muffler to the back, so you could open up the collectors. And uh, we used to use uh, on those, the, the, the thing to do at that time was uh, in the end of the collector, they'd uh, weld a little bar across there with a nut or with a bolt welded to it. And they'd make these little round caps that would go on there to cap them off. And to hold the caps on, they'd use uh, uh, big wing nuts off of Toro lawnmowers. We used to go buy them at the lawnmower store. And uh, cause they were aluminum and they wouldn't get hot. You could take them off and put them on without burning your hands too bad. So, but anyway, uh, so that's what this guy, this set of headers did. And, uh, and they looked pretty decent. It looked like somebody had done a pretty decent job with them. And so I drove this thing for a couple of weeks and, and uh, I was thinking it was some kind of a timing issue. And I, I thought maybe the cam was out of time or something, but it shouldn't have been because it came from the, it was a factory short block. And the 327 short block should have been a pretty potent car. And uh, so anyway, I messed around with it. Well, one day I was, one weekend I was home and I thought, I wonder if this thing would be any different if you open the headers up. And so I, I took the cap off the took the caps off the headers and pulled it out in the street by my house and revved it up and it sounded better and anyway I dumped the clutch and the thing come alive I did a burnout and holy smoke that thing had a lot of power well it told me there was something wrong with the headers so anyway getting back underneath there with a the flashlight and what I found was that whoever built the headers when they put the pipe going back to the through the muffler on the left side header they welded it to the collector but they didn't go inside and cut a hole so what that meant was that all the exhaust from the driver's side bank of that engine was going up through the heat riser passage in the manifold they had those in those days and trying to so all the exhaust was trying to go up through that little heat riser passage and out the right hand bank out through the out through the right side of the of the vehicle so obviously the the, the uh, tremendous exhaust restriction so anyway I got I had a torch at the time I just crawled up in there and and burned that thing in the open and opened it up again and uh, by golly that car had run mid 13s at the drag strip uh, it was one of the us poor kids you know we we all we all run and try five Chevys and with 280 most of them had 283s and I had 327 so I was a big dog and uh, the rich kids were all driving Mustangs, by the way, because that was when right after the Mustangs first came out. And those 289s and those Mustangs weren't the most powerful thing in the world. And, and uh, a guy with a good run in 283 and a 55 Chevy could outrun them. And, uh, and 
drag racing, uh, street racing was a pretty big deal back in those days. And uh, so, you know, I, I did a little bit of that and, you know, don't hate on me. It was just what we did in those days. And that was a, that was kind of a big deal. And there's a couple of rural roads out there. They had quarter miles painted off on them and we'd go out there and race. And, but uh, finally, you know, that uh, like anything, eventually the word came down and the law enforcement cracked down on that. And fortunately I never got caught and never got in trouble for doing that. But, but that's a little, uh, little tidbit in the way back machine that, uh, I drove that car up until I got in the military and I sold it while I was in the army and ended up getting something else and left the military with a pickup truck. But, uh, you know, it's one of those cars I kind of wish I'd kept it. And if I had it today, it'd probably be worth a lot of money. But it was a straight old 57 Chevy. It was nine years old when I bought it. And, and uh, had to, somebody put Oldsmobile bucket seats in it. And Oh yeah, a little, another little tidbit is that uh, in those days, uh, four speeds were available, but boy, they were expensive. And most of us kids couldn't afford them. And so we used uh, what we call the old three speed, three speed with the uh, by her shifters for them. And uh, we called them crash boxes because we used to break them quite regularly. They didn't hold up real well. And, but you'd go to the wrecking yard and you could buy them for 15 bucks. And so we'd all go down there and we'd buy a couple extras and we'd have a couple extras laying on the, laying in the, at the house somewhere. And if we broke one, we'd just swap it out. It only took about 30 minutes. But uh, that's what us poor kids all ran in our cars. And that, uh, they used to run a little bit at the uh, Beeline Dragway, which was up on uh, Highway 87 north of Mesa. Uh, they've been out of business for many, many, many years. But uh, once again, those of you that maybe grew up in the Phoenix area, you'll probably remember the they had the big commercials on. And yeah, this guy with this big booming voice and say, Saturday night, Saturday night, a beautiful Beeline Dragway, thundering top fuel action. And uh, just a little tidbit about how Macy used to be. It was back in the late 60s. And, you know, I didn't, I got drafted and, February of 1968, so those days came to a close real quick. But just a little uh, little story from the Wayback Machine. Thought you might enjoy it. And uh, I've got some more to talk about my old truck. There's some stuff. Uh, I uploaded a video last night. And I missed some stuff, but it was too late in the day to try to refilm it. So I'm going to do a, a, a follow-up video here pretty quick. I'm not sure exactly when to talk about some more stuff, some more problems I ran into with the old truck when I was building it. But I'm going to close this one out right now. This thing's probably long enough. So like I always tell you, uh, take care of each other, love each other, take care of yourself. It's a beautiful day. Um, maybe we'll get a little bit of rain later on, I hope. Uh, our monsoons are overdue. They should have been here by now. But uh, with that, let me turn it back around. Poor old Flapjack, he's in the truck and he probably wants a drink of water. So we're going to take him home and we're going to go get him one. So for right now, I'll tell you till I catch you next time, I'll just say peace out.